All right, guys, it's time for another Rediscovering Vinyl with Nick and Rye. Well, as always, join my guest Rye, my good friend over in Arizona. And That's right. That's right. He's repping the Bears jersey, even though they got their butt kicked this week. <laughs> It's uh, it is tough to wear this this uh, jersey, but <laughs> uh, gotta gotta do it from time to time. I get it. Hey, when they move to Arlington Heights, though, dude, we'll we'll go to a game. It's like forty five minutes down the street. So, uh, this week, oh, yeah. no, re- that's that's gonna be a good move for him. I can't wait. Uh, this week we are talking about the Boz Skaggs out of the Blues record. Uh, I interviewed Boz on our on my channel about I don't know three weeks ago. Uh, I was so pumped from listening to this record and talking to him. I was like, you know what? Sure. We should we should review it, throw it on the yeah. Rediscovering Vinyl record. I'm glad we did. I thought it was, first of all, it's a blues record. Yeah. And and my, uh, I, just to kind of give everybody, I know some people may, this might be their first time listening, but, you know, Nick and I, our, our, our whole idea with this is to ex- expose ourselves to some new types of music, mm-hmm. uh, but also kind of give you an opportunity to maybe see what else is out there um, and available for you. And, you know, this, this idea of mainstream music is kind of um, start. I I have personally felt that it's been on the decline for quite some time. Um, You're seeing a lot more artists that are popping up on YouTube um, and kind of on these smaller labels and things like that. And there's a lot of good music out there to, um, to experience. And our hope is to maybe give you some insight on some of that music. Um, we are both we we both recognize that these people are professionals at their craft and understand that um, they know what they're doing. So yep. anything we say is basically pure opinion on our on our end uh, with the experience that we've had with music. And um, I don't know, it's just that we're having a lot of fun, and we hope that you guys uh, are having fun with uh, listening to it as well. But when it comes to Boss Gags, um, you know, from my experience of him, I remember my father talking about uh, him a few times. Um, but when it comes to his music, I was pretty green to it. Okay. Um, I actually looked up a few of his bigger songs uh, when I uh, looked up this album. Did um, you recognize was, any of his older stuff? Yeah, I did. I absolutely did. Um, just from hearing stuff like on the radio every once in a while. Um, you know, he, he's got a, a unique sound to him. And when I when we said that we we're going to do this, I was excited because I, I love blues music. Um, one of my greatest memories was Nate Yeski's bachelor party. And <laughs> we went to Buddy Guy's Blues uh, Club downtown Chicago. Okay. Um, I don't remember what it was called. I believe they've closed it recently. But it opened up the doors to all kinds of things for me. You know, I, you walk into this place and it's a club and you could just you could smell the cigar smoke still and – you know, they served certain types of home style, southern types of cooking. Um, and it was, we saw an artist named Watermelon Jack, who was probably the best harmonica player I, I have ever seen. And I've seen quite a few. My father is a big uh, festival musician. Uh-huh. I grew up going to all the different festivals. He would perform at Davis Park um, on the waterfront often. Um, so, harmonica blues you know good leads great guitar players um were kind of my jam growing up so Mm -hmm. when i was i was excited to listen to this album um and see what his take on blues was going to be so for those of you who maybe are familiar with boss kicks because i know there's a lot of people on my channel who are probably know of silk degrees and you know Lido shuffle in georgia this is what i would consider you know it's late 70s mid 70s yacht rock it's soft easy listening kind of poppy kind of stuff his new actually his last three records but the one we're talking about today is a blues record it's yeah there there's not much pop on it there's there are sure. some catchy ass tunes on it but it's yeah not, yeah for uh, sure it's not a it's 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 a different genre is what i'm trying to get to you know give it a chance yeah. don't just say oh boss that's from the 70s now nah. no it's it's a legitimate that- blues record and i like that there's artists that are doing this nowadays because we did um was that Sturgill Simpson? Was that yeah. the name of that country artist? Yeah. Um, you know, seeing him branch out and it was still country, but it's more folk style of music. It really shows the musicianship of these artists. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that about them. Um, I, I hearing his older stuff kind of more, like you said, like softer kind of stuff, hearing him have kind of a bluesy tone to his voice, um, uh, a unique vibrato to his voice uh-huh. as well, um, which you don't usually hear in blues music. Blues, to me, 
has a lot more of like the lower raspy kind of sounding voice. Um, Mm -hmm. His voice definitely had more of like a uh, uh, kind of like more of like a Frank Sinatra kind of feel to it when it came to like his bigness and um, definitely had more tone to his voice. Blues music tends to be more centered around the riffs and the uh, licks and the leads of the guitar, the harmonica, whatever um, the the uh, accompaniment may be. But I was I, I thoroughly enjoyed what he brought on this album. Um, big, I was a, a pretty big fan of it. it. It it reminded me, Nick, of it really kind of as the album played through. I can almost feel the funnel cake smell in the air. Sense the funnel cake smell. I could feel the the daytime kind of show that I would go to when I was a young kid with my father seeing like, you know, things like on the waterfront and stuff like that, where you, you have these just traditional blues kind of riffs, the dead and dent, 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 and then a little bit of a riff in between. Um, I dug it. I really thoroughly enjoyed the horn section in this album as well. You know, blues music can sometimes be monotonous Mm -hmm. in a weird way if you're not somebody that enjoys it. Um, But he did a nice job making the music interesting. I don't know, and you can answer this, hopefully. I I don't know the answer to this, Nick, but is he a part of a band or is he a solo artist that has a hired band? Do you know the answer to that? So here's, and I'm going to throw you off the track too. So he is a, him and his buddy work together together to write songs. Actually, Boz okay. didn't write a single song on this record. I don't even think okay. he has a single credit. He is has a co-write with his buddy. Um, and I just throw it away? Today I threw away my notes. Um, Idiot. Of course I did. <laughs> uh, so half of this record is covers, which you would never know. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have known that. You wouldn't in. have known sure. that. And the other half are done by uh, his buddy... Jack Fish, Jack Star, Jack. Anyway, those two are good buddies. They go way back, and he pretty much writes the songs. And okay. him and Boz kind of go back and forth. Like he writes something. It's like Boz, I got something. Cuts him on the phone. They kind of put it together. Um, so that's kind of how he wrote. But he really didn't like writing credit. Write the songs first, start to finish. Also, his he has a hired band that he goes on tour with, full band. Uh, none other than Mr. Ghostbusters, Ray Parker Jr. is in his band. Really? Yes. Oh, his, that's cool. <laughs> he's on this record. That's cool. They've been, I guess they've been like hanging out. I mean, they he's been on like a bunch of his, been in his band forever. You know, it's crazy you say that because when I went to Buddy Guy's Blues Club, they had pictures of all these people that would come and play since the 19, like thirties. I want to say uh, yeah. that that club had been around for a long time. I think it still is. And there I was, think it's still open. Is it still open? Good. I, think I, I wasn't closed, sure. But I think it closed for COVID and then they opened it back up. Well, they, I, there was pictures of like Dan Aykroyd up on stage. There was pictures of all these celebrities. And now that you say that, I remember uh, <laughs> that guy being on the, the wall and I, I completely forgot about it. that's crazy you say that so that that's cool that is awesome yeah. i'm not sure if he's in the traveling band but he's on this record so cool. there's like cool. eight people nine people on this that, that helped you know record this record with him and uh which is that's to me that's blues music though yeah. you you are you, blues music was was come up and and play this and and play along with me because yeah. i'll be honest blues music as a rhythm guitar player is not very difficult it's about <laughs> no. three chord progression it's a fairly similar um uh, strum pattern and and the same few couple chords you just kind of change keys from time to time I, i'm not taking away i love blues music don't mm-hmm. get me wrong but the what brings blues music up a level is the musicianship of the solos of the accompaniment of the rest of the band you know you have your drummer you have your bass player you have your rhythm guitar player but it's the lead guitar player it's the harmonicus it's these individuals that come up stage and play a song and then they get a new it's almost like a new feel to them from song to song you know just based on who's playing who you're playing with um so that's cool that there's a lot of different musicians on this on this album. That makes it uh, very interesting to me. Who 
what let's get into your favorite songs on the record because sure. some of these have different stories and when i interviewed him i we were talking about that and i wanted to i wanted to see what you thought of it so uh again i'm a huge proponent um my my big thing and, and my method when we listen to these music the, these songs uh or these albums nick is i i'm a big proponent of the first song on the album yeah i i, I it has to draw me in it has to I think it's the most important song on the album. Um, I am a, a big believer in a, a, a strong, strong first song. Obviously, all of your songs should be strong. Don't get me wrong. But um, the, the first and last song to me are, are what bring you in. And then they send you off with, with something that uh, feels right. It brings resolution to the album. Um, still, the first song in this album was my favorite. Um, I've listened to it quite a few times. I just, I liked it. I, I think what it draws me in is I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and I think that it was a solid song to start this album with. Um, so that one is definitely the, the top of my list. Um, I did like Down in Virginia. Okay. Um, I like The Feeling is Gone. Again, that's the last song on the okay. album, at least on the one that I have here. I know last week we had a little bit of a mix up. The ones on iTunes were not yeah, in the same order. Yeah, the record as the one on the vinyl so it threw me off um i like the feeling is gone i like rock and stick down in virginia and uh little miss day uh, little miss night and day okay were the ones so, that I, I think that i enjoyed the most so the guy's name that writes these songs is applejack and his full name is jack walworth he's that's the good buddy he's good buddies with boz he wrote rock and stick so that is an original okay cool and then little miss night and day is the only song that Boz and Applejack wrote together. Cool. The Feeling Is Gone is actually a Don Dedrick Roby. I don't know who that is. Um, but my two favorite songs, which are totally different than yours, is kind of weird because usually we're pretty tight. Yeah, you're right. Radiator 110 was my number one that was, song. It was That was a cool one. It's like a ZZ Top, like cool yep. It, like you it's such a cool song that's an applejack song and the other one is on the beach which is actually a neil young cover of interesting on the beach was an album he did and obviously that's the title track from the album uh and when he wrote that album he neil young was in kind of a he really didn't want to reissue it because it was like he was depressed and in a bad spot in his life and uh, it took him forever to reissue it and to this day it's kind of a little tougher to find uh but interesting and then you can hear it in on the beach it's like a six minute song about the world's changing things are happening yeah. and it's it's a little it's a little bit down but the way he does it is very bluesy in fact i like this version i'm more familiar with it now than the original but i like this version better but um i, I the things i liked though nick um with the, the band that plays with him is very good um the the group that he has with him the harmonica player is awesome um, when he shows up throughout the the album, um, the the horn sections are tasteful. Um, but I, I really want to I really want to talk about Boz's his voice. Okay. Um, it didn't sound traditional bluesy to me, which I liked. It had more of a vibrato. It had more um, I don't know influx at times with with his voice. He I mean, we're, again, we're not talking about a huge range of vocal here where he's not hitting some crazy notes by any means, but it fits uniquely well with the style of music. Yep. Um, and, and you and I always do this. What would you be doing if you were listening to this album? What would you what situation or scenario would you put this album on? Uh, this is I am uh, drinking a glass, probably like an old fashioned and it's late okay. at night. And the night's getting a little foggy, <laughs> and you're just chilling out. You're just like the last record before bed, or just getting sure. late in the night, kind of evening chill out record. What'd you have? So, so I live in Arizona, and I'm I currently, you know, I live around uh, a bunch of mountains, and you know, you go 30 minutes in any direction from where I'm at, and you're essentially out of the city, and you're driving through the mountains or through desert and things like that. I really couldn't help but picture myself as like a 60, 65 year old man on like a motorcycle or like one of those three wheeled motorcycles or maybe <laughs> even have like a sidecar, you know, and like, I feel like I'm a badass, but really I'm just like, I'm not, but I, I listened to Boz Skaggs blues and 
it makes me feel right with the world. <laughs> I, it just felt like it felt like that style of uh, that that style of music to me. You know, I totally um, agree. I, I might put some. I have like the leather gloves with the frills, the fringe. You know, I got some beads on there, and you know, I roll up to like a an Applebee's and get some. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get some wings or something. No, I I it was a very. Uh, kind of driving song for me or a, an album for me you know and and i think the setting that i'm in fit very well with that um i just i i was i, I kind of laughed at myself when i <laughs> i told them that because when I, I listen to these albums i think about well, what would i what would i be doing in this you know yeah i told them i said that radiator 110 song i feel like i'm in like an old 30s chopped car like just cruising real slow sure like yeah. that's how I felt yeah. when I listened to that song, and and I think it's like you said, you, you kind of had the same idea. So I pulled up a, a who's on this record: Charlie Sexton's on guitar, Applejack, Walrath is the harmonica player, Ray Parker, awesome, cool. Ray, Ray Parker Jr. on guitars, Willie Weeks bass, uh, Jim Keltner, Jim Cox, Chris Phelps. A lot of people, a lot of talent in his little circle. He lives in uh, San Francisco, cool. so he's got a big, like, he's, dude's traveled the this, world, but, uh, yeah, it's wild. I told my dad about that. My, I told my dad about this album. My, my dad's a big musician from the Rockford area. Um, he's been playing around that area for his entire life, essentially, and I uh, told him about it, and he, uh, I think his his genre and his his age of, of, of person would be a great um uh, kind of target market for this album. I, sure. I think it, they would enjoy it very much, you know? So yep. I know I yeah, put it on was, for my dad today and he was like, Oh, this is yeah, pretty good. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I could Larry would love yeah, Larry like, all about, I could see him. He said it was, we listened to the first two songs. He goes, it's like, uh, Oh God, what did he tell me? It was Robert Cray with a different guitar. I was like, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. See, and I think without um, the guitar, you know, you know, he had Any, anybody that's of, of, a, of a, a later generation that's listening to this. I think you're going to really enjoy this. And um, I suggest, you know, checking it out. Um, you guys have it at the store, I'm assuming, right now. Yeah. yeah, we got it at the store. Single OP copy, 26 bucks. It came out in 2018. It's still worth picking up. They're still in print. You could still get them. Uh, cool. It's not expensive. It's worth a listen. And uh, yeah, if you're getting into blues music. Yeah, you know? I, I suggest it absolutely. You know? It's it's the modern blues, and it's it's a yeah. nice little refreshing taste of it, and I think it's something that people dig. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the you know there's there's a uh, a side that is missing when it comes to me with this album that that we can record things nowadays. You know, it, it, it blues music needs to be gritty, needs to be. Mm -hmm. it has to have that grit feel to it. And they did a pretty good job of capturing that as well with their recording. They didn't make it too clean and cut to where it sounds cookie cut. It's it's It sounds good. I was a fan. Good cool. choice. Well, there you have it. We are rediscovering vinyl with Nick and Rye. That is Boz Skaggs of Blues. We went over. He liked half the songs. I like the other half of the songs. So there you have yeah. it. All the songs are good. Yeah. Worth checking out. If you want to see my interview with him on the phone, it is over on the channel. I'll put that up in the top or in the, the comments or whatever. I'll also put a link for the record if you decide to check out a few songs. I'll put the songs in the comments so you can listen to them. And then if you want to buy it, we have it in there in the comments too. Uh, Ryan, it's been – it's always fun, man. I'm excited to do Absolutely. more records. We've got so many records to do. We are getting into the record season. It's like – 40 it's like 55 degrees outside and rainy which means record season is starting up here in northern absolutely Illinois. people are starting cool. they're coming in they're buying turntables and they're buying stereos and they're it's it's crazy how the weather dictates my season so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it started here and uh we're gonna be knocking out a bunch of records going forward i've got all sorts of fun stuff coming on the channel i did a tour of a record company today a, re uh, a turntable manufacturer uh, that'll be coming up on the channel pretty soon. I've got interviews with other artists. We were going to keep doing these. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Cool, man. See ya. See you guys.